Welcome back to the channel. This week, a number of news outlets are reporting that the FDA is poised to do something that they hadn't anticipated doing. They're going to give another emergency use authorization to a second bivalent booster. So if you're keeping score at home, this means that an elderly person may now be eligible for one, two, three, four, five regular Wuhan vaccine doses, and then two more bivalent doses, bringing the grand total to seven doses of COVID-19 vaccine. They may have also had COVID-19 once, twice, three times along the way, but the FDA still thinks they ought to get seven doses of bivalent vaccine. Is this evidence-based medicine? Or is this Peter Marks and FDA just making shit up? Which is it? Which is it? What are we dealing with here? I want to talk about that in this video. First of all, the way this is being reported, people are leaking to the news outlets that the FDA is poised to make this decision. Leaking to the news outlets what emergency use authorizations you're going to grant, that's not how regulatory science works. That's what we call crazy town. This is basically saying... We're going to leak this information to the press and we're going to wait to see if anyone has any good objections. And if not, we're just going to do this. That's not how you make regulatory decisions. You have to run clinical trials. You have to look at the evidence. You have to see if the benefits outweigh the risks. You don't just get to play public opinion and see this is this is not politics. This is regulatory science. What are we talking about here? So one, the process is bizarre. Two, I think even the most ardent proponent of vaccines must concede the fact that no one knows if seven is the right number. Should we go with seven? Should we have just done six? What about nine? And of course, nobody's saying it's just seven. It's gonna be seven plus one or two indefinitely forever. That's the plan. But the question is, should it be two a year? Or should it be three a year? Or one a year? Or should it be zero a year? We don't know the answer because this FDA doesn't actually know how to ask the company to conduct the necessary randomized control trial. See, that's what they've forgotten how to do. See, one of the great ironies is it's actually the first two doses that have the best evidence, but it's the first two doses that occurred in the most desperate time. That was when most Americans hadn't yet met the virus and getting that vaccine out there right away was of utmost importance. The first two doses, if anything, should have had the lower regulatory bar. They had the highest regulatory bar. They had a randomized control trial showing reduction in symptomatic SARS-CoV-2. That's the primary endpoint. Of course, there are multiple such studies for the different products. But in those studies, they also had a severe imbalance in severe disease, which made many people feel confident in thinking not only does it avert symptomatic disease, it also averts severe disease, hospitalization, and death, and a whole bunch of other endpoints would support that in observational data. But you also had that signal in a randomized fashion. But then we get to the third booster, the third dose, the first booster. And people say, well, you know, that's bioplausible. It's much more bioplausible. And the observational literature is a little bit more positive than later observational literature. So maybe that's allowable in somebody who's 75 or 80. Then the second booster. Okay. Okay. Well, then the fifth dose. Okay. Well, now you're getting into a place where you don't have good randomized studies supporting the fifth dose and you have observational studies that are flawed because they compare people who rushed to get the fifth dose against people who didn't rush to get them. And of course, there are differences besides getting that fifth dose among those who rush to get it and those who don't. You're really starting to building that, conf that confounding problem on the back end. You also have problems with time zero. You have other problems too. Don't get me wrong. Then you get be the first bivalent dose. And none of these doses have any provision that says if you've already had COVID, you don't need it. They're just adding on. So we get to the sixth dose, the first bivalent, and now we're getting the seventh dose. What are we doing? We need randomized control trials. Even if you believe in these vaccines, don't you want to compare twice a year to three times a year to quarterly? Can't we do a multi-arm study of no additional doses, once yearly doses, twice yearly doses, thrice yearly doses, powered for severe, severe disease and death? If it is in fact such an emergency that you need to evoke EUA, such a study should be straightforward. Not doing this study is crazy town. What prevents Peter Marks from just authorizing an emergency use authorization for a continuous IV infusion of booster? Why not just put it on a pump and just pump yourself full of booster all the time? The truth is, I'm sure in a mouse study, you would increase antibody titers. So that's the sufficient threshold for regulatory approval from Peter Marks. So why wouldn't he grant it? In fact, the precedents he's set are so illogical that you could imagine giving yourself a shot every single day and they have no basis for denying such an EUA claim. Now, the worst part about this whole thing, in the news, a number of news outlets are saying one of the factors that goes into their decision is that the Biden administration already bought a bunch of 
BA45 Wuhan bivalent booster that nobody wants. Because the truth is Americans want each additional dose less and less and less. And so they have a big stockpile of booster they've already shelled out the money for, and that's about to expire in the refrigerator. And a couple of news outlets, including a quote by Peter Hotez, says it's better to get that in arms rather than let it expire in the fridge. This is crazy talk. You don't approve medical products because you're worried about it spoiling in the refrigerator. You approve it if it has a net benefit to people that outweighs the harms. To do that, you need controlled clinical trials. You don't just make shit up. This is totally the Wild West. With each additional dose, they're lowering the regulatory bar. It went from mouse antibody data to we need to clean out the fridge. That's what happened in the last two doses. It's crazy talk. There are many people who care about FDA standards. They're very vocal on aducanumab. They're very vocal on Exondus. They're very vocal on the new cancer drugs. When it comes to the abuse and misuse of EUA around vaccines, they're dead quiet. And the reason they're dead quiet is that they don't want to cast any aspersions on any vaccine under any circumstances. And that's also wrong. That's also anti-scientific. Many vaccines have provided tremendous good. Many should be recommended and advised, but a perpetual booster campaign based on no credible evidence, that should be questioned. That really should be questioned, even in older people. Some people say, you know, we can't run randomized control trials. That's a complete lie. Pfizer has 100 billion reasons they can do it. They just bought Seattle Genetics. They paid a high premium for CGen. By the way, today's results from the SWOG study making CGen's BV looking pretty bad. So by the way, the side note, probably overpaid a little bit. Okay, uh, you probably overpaid. Okay, you just bought CGen. Pfizer's got so much cash, they don't even know where to put it. They just have to start buying other companies. And you're telling me they can't run a randomized control trial in a high-risk subgroup? You yourself are saying the deaths are still high in this subgroup. You yourself are saying it's still an emergency. And you yourself are saying, well, of course, we can't run randomized control trials that are powered for the right endpoints. That's a contradiction, okay? I'm one to think that with high levels of prior COVID-19 infection, the emergency has passed passed a couple years ago, and now you should subject your vaccines to full, proper biological licensing agreement or bust. If you don't get the proper approval, you don't get to come to market. That's what I think. I think that Peter Marks might go down in history as the worst FDA drug regulator of all times. That's right. He is really flying blind. He believes that he is justified in this reckless approvals uh, on the basis of the fact that COVID-19 was a real threat. And both these things are true. I mean, COVID-19 was in fact a real threat, particularly in 2020. That was back when he was dragging his feet with the initial approval because the study changed the number of endpoint, the number of events that had to occur before they take first look. So they did drag their feet back then when it might have mattered. And now he's just authorizing EUA after EUA with no credible data. And no one can tell me that seven is the right number. Should it be six or eight or nine or five, if you were a believer? Or should it just be that once you've had the infection, then maybe we cut you loose? The first dose was probably the most important dose. Should it vary based on medical comorbidities? You know, this is something that remains unexplored. So my overall thoughts with this microphone that I didn't secure properly before I started recording this video. My overall thoughts, the FDA, dereliction of duty, they're pathetic. They don't know evidence-based medicine. They don't know how to run trials. They failed the American people countless times in this pandemic. They have failed by not generating appropriate evidence. They're just giving Pfizer money, Paxlovid and vaccinated people, even though Epic SR is negative, a perpetual booster campaign because otherwise it's gonna go bad in the freezer. They are just forking over money to this company. Probably when they quit FDA, they're gonna go work for this company or consult for this company. That happened before. Scott Gottlieb, of course, former FDA commissioner, is on the board of directors of Pfizer. And you know what else? Steve Hahn is at a venture capital firm that made hand over fist money from Moderna. So they're very likely to go work for the same sector that they have regulated. This is the common revolving door. That's a huge conflict of interest. They have no principles. They don't know what evidence-based medicine means. It means as the risk goes low, as the number of prior COVID infections goes up, the standard of evidence should go higher, not lower. It should actually be higher now than it ever was because this is the least risky moment in time for an elderly person. Back then was the riskiest. It should have been lowest then. The bar they said I thought was actually quite suitable for the initial approval, but all these subsequent approvals are a farce. And their retrospective, confounded, time zero confused observational literature fails us. It has never been validated. Their own project RCT 
duplicate failed to replicate randomized trials and observational studies. It failed, and yet they continue to embrace this. So when I hear Bob Califf talk about misinformation, the place he needs to look is in the mirror because the FDA has been one of the greatest disseminators of misinformation, particularly on vaccines and Paxlovid, in my opinion. And what do I know? I'm just somebody who reads these studies for a living. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. We'll be back with more. I've got a fun thing for you coming up soon. So until next time.